welcome to this episode of Let's Talk Trans with your hosts Gabe and Leo. This is a show that supports the LGBTQ plus community as a whole while focusing on the lives, struggle, and achievements of transgender people. Are you ready? Let's get started. You can definitely tell it's a full moon in this house tonight. Holy cow. My dogs have not stopped. This is take number three. All right. Thank you for following our Wednesday night edition of Let's Talk Trans. I'm your host, Gabriel. It is going to be a solo night for me. Uh, Leo is doing homework. Kai is off at work. Uh, and it, it just is. Like I said, it's, it's our third uh, attempt at this. The dogs are driving me nuts. I want to apologize first and foremost for not having our Sunday night. It had absolutely nothing to do with football. I was under the weather. I ended up watching the football game from the couch uh, with the tissues and a, a sore throat and sinuses and all that fun gobbledygook. So I really wasn't in a position to, you know, do a podcast with everybody. But you know, we wanted to make sure that we got this out. We did have a fabulous fabulous episode plan and i really want to do it for you all right before i say do it for you one more time that sounded really really bad what i meant was i wanted to go over all the information that we had accrued for you guys because it was close to valentine's day and valentine's day was monday so i hope i truly truly hope that every single one of you had a phenomenal 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 okay sorry muppets um squirrel moment Valentine's Day. If you didn't, this podcast is going to be uh, special for you, and I truly hope that it is, because what we want to talk about tonight, or what I want to talk about tonight, and what I hope you want to listen to tonight, is love. Not just, you know, ooey-gooey, romantic, uh, romantic comedy type love, but that self-sustaining personal affirmation love thyself love because it is okay to love yourself and and uh, one thing that i learned oh my gosh years and years ago i was probably fresh out of the service uh, a friend of mine we'll call her betsy had made made a comment to me a couple of times and it didn't stick because i was so much younger she used to tell me that If you can't find it within, you'll never find it without. I didn't understand that at the time, and it could have applied to a million things. You know, confidence, courage, bravery, honesty. But it took me marriage and divorce and two children, multiple uh, jobs, and finally a, a career and, you know, 17 guinea pigs in my basement. To realize that for me, finding love within was critical in order to find it outside. That doesn't mean I, there's no bow here. There's no bowette, what, whatever a female version of a bow is. All right, there, there's, no, there's no significant other. Let's put it this way. And I'm okay with that. Uh, I, I'm in a place – psychologically, uh, euphorically, <laughs> if, if that's even possible, that I, I don't need that. Do I want it? Of course. Do I need it? No. And and that's part of what tonight's podcast is about. Before we get into that too, too terribly deeply, I want to talk about something that uh, I was really impressed with you know I asked I asked on all the Facebook pages I asked on my own personal page I we asked on the uh, podcast page everybody's favorite romantic comedy and let me tell you there were so many responses we had well over 100 responses we had 91 different movies suggested and I'll be perfectly honest a lot of them I hadn't heard of I am not a romantic comedy type uh, give me good old action films any day 
preferably older action films, but whatever. Uh, I was I was floored. So I'll, I'll admit, uh, being uh, uh, being a teacher, I I did use this kind of like a social experiment. I you know not only exposed this question to people who were transgender and part of the LGBTQ community, I also exposed it to people who are cisgender. And I can guarantee you the vast majority of cisgender people who answered have never listened to a podcast. So they had no clue what they were actually doing. What I found was, and again, it it wasn't a surprise to me because I kind of expected it. But in the same breath, it cements this one thing that drives me nuts about these communities or our community versus the cisgender community. And the fact is, is that the number one rated, the number one movie between both cisgender and transgender individuals was The Notebook. Again, I had not a movie I'd seen. I had no clue. I don't know who's in it. I've never, I don't even know the gist of it. I think it has something to do with a cabin. Anyway. It might have something to do with a notebook. It <laughs> Leo, in the background, here you hear, it might have something to do with a notebook. Yeah, think, I think what it is, is I think that there's like a notebook at this cabin, and like, a guy writes in it, and a girl finds it, or vice versa, and it's kind of like writing notes back and forth, or she spends the weekend reading all his notes left in the, I don't know. Uh, again, I have no real concept, and I, I'm sorry, I truly have absolutely no desire to even watch it. It doesn't matter how many all all 100 of the votes could have been for that movie. I still would not watch it. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, cisgender individuals idea of romantic comedy and transgender individuals idea of romantic comedy are the same. You know, it's not like you know, a, a cisgender person, and I know because we, we, we get this all the time, um, and especially I personally, you know, a cisgender person will look at me and go, how do you like that? You're, you're, you're transgender. And I'll look at them and go, what do you mean? I'm still a, a person. I mean, like, whether it's, it's football or food or a book or a topic, um, how do you know how to do that? You're transgender. And I'm like, well, yeah, it doesn't make me like a fish. You know, like, of course I know how to do that, or why wouldn't I, or how couldn't I? I, It's almost like we get looked at like we're aliens or subpar or something. But this was, again, this was my little catalyst, my little science experiment. Um, Movies that were shared between both, like, cisgender community and transgender community were Princess Bride, P.S. I Love You, When Harry Met Sally... The Notebook, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Sweet Home Alabama, and 50 First Dates. Um, some of those I'd seen. Some of them I didn't. Ever, I think everybody everybody of a certain age has seen Princess Bride. Uh, Andre the Giant was still my favorite character. And, uh, you know, I, hands down, you know. All right. Anyway. Uh, but, again, um, there was also Little Shop of Horror, Deadpool 2. <laughs> <laughs> Die Hard. A lot of movies I, I was got a little questionable, like, okay, but uh h- how is that how's that romantic? I mean like uh. But then, you know, you also had um Shakespeare in Love, Romeo and Juliet, Pride and Prejudice, some of the some of the more classic uh movies. And it was it was really, really good. I mean like like I said, there was there was ninety one different movies actually mentioned Memoirs of a Geisha, Notting Hill, You've Got Mail, um, Meet Joe Black, Venom 2. (laughs) Um, The new movie that just came out, Marry Me, with Jennifer Lopez. Uh, A couple people saw that, and they said it was hands down their their new favorite uh, movie. I was was truly surprised that West Side Story wasn't um, there, primarily because they just – did a remake, and of course the original was really good. Uh, but the, uh, like, like I said, you know, everybody's a lot of these were different. Uh, very few. I, there was there was dozens of them that like one person mentioned, and then you know, Pride and Prejudice. Like I said, Boy Meets Girl, Titanic. You know, you'd see a couple of them that were re- repeat themselves. 
Chasing Amy, which I hadn't seen. Uh, Rocky, Moulin Rouge, Meet Joe Black. I think I said that one already. Um, Howling, Howling Moving Castle? Howling, Howl's Moving Castle. Howl's, wow, okay. Eternal Sunshine. There was even one for a Bollywood. Uh, don't ask me to repeat that because I, I couldn't say if I wanted to. Purple Rain, Better Than Chocolate. There there was. It was just, it was insane. And, and the beauty of it is there is so much romantic comedy out there that it really, really was impressive for a lot of people. And not everybody's a big fan of romantic comedies. Uh, I don't know what everybody's opinion of the, I- the ideal Valentine would be, whether it's chocolates and flowers or traditional stuff. Or whether it's, you know, something more spontaneous, dinner, lobster, candlelight, you know. It it, it varies for every single person. I, I've i long since, I, I couldn't actually tell you the last time I had like a, a an actual traditional Valentine's Day. Uh, last year I, I terrorized my children by filling their rooms with balloons. And then, uh, I, I, you know, I've always gotten them the, the big stuffies. This year, Leo got a, a blue octopus uh, for Valentine's Day. And uh, Kai got a sloth. It was just, you know, like I said, it's, they're getting a little bit older. Not so much, but, you know, it, it's not a, a big ooh-ah type thing. And I, I want them to experience it in their own way and, and and fall in love with the idea of their own way. But the thing of it is, is like I personally, uh, okay, you know, I I could do without. Um, a friend and a, a friend of mine did send me a Valentine's Day card, and uh, he's my my little secret crush, and we'll just keep it at that because I just broadcasted that he was my secret crush. <laughs> Way to go, Gabe. Keep that secret. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Um, But anyway, like I said, so, you know, like I said, I'm not a big fan of romantic comic movies. Uh, I, I, I'm i an action movie. Give me some history, whatever have you. But so what I did was I, I actually went on to Goodreads and Audible, and Barnes & Noble, like a couple of different places – and I went and I looked on transgender romance because, well, uh, there's got to be, right? I mean, transgender, the the idea of transgender or, or transgender individuals, the transgender community has been out since the 70s. Um, people who don't identify as their gender, that's been, uh, we're, that's Roman Empire, uh, if not further back. I'm sure it's further back, but, you know, some of our first inklings are, are the Roman Empire. But I went on to look for transgender romance, and holy buckets. Don't get me wrong. Of course, there's a lot of smut. I mean, we like our smut. People like smut. I can't help it. Leo does not like the word smut. I think it's like the word moist for him. <laughs> if you ever... <laughs> Adults are nasty. Ew. Nasty. Yeah, don't. Even the dogs are agreeing. People are nasty. Um, a smut is smut. I it just I mean, to each his own. So, some people that's that's their way of connecting with romance. Not everybody. I mean, in my opinion, it, it's over romanticized. So I'm not gonna knock it, but I'm I'm just gonna say that it's probably you know if that's where your idealism is, then. You might need to knock it down a peg or two. I mean, unless you're reading it with your partner and then acting it out and to it then again each his own. But anyway, we're gonna keep this PG. <laughs> Thank God Leo's not involved in this one because holy crap. So I again, I, I went on like I said, I, I went on to Barnes and Noble and transgender romance and I found of course quite a few. So then I just kind of backed off the word romance and transgender books. And again, I am I, I'm truly amazed, overwhelmed, amazed, appreciative of the slew 